Hello and welcome to Adelux on this new Lutron Homeware's QoS tutorial. The subject of today is addressed to new programmers who start with Homeware's QoS and we are going to review the key documents that are required and see which information on those documents will really help you completing your first programming successfully. So without further ado, let's do it. So here's the situation. Let's say that you are sent to site to commission and program a Lutron Homeware's QS project for the very first time. And you're not really familiar on how this particular system has been wired or put together and what it involves. But you need by the end of the day to have that system running and fully commissioned. So where do you start and what do you need? Well, that's very easy. To start, you will need a lighting floor plan or a load schedule, as well as a wiring schedule. But let's start with the lighting floor plan because there are different ways a lighting floor plan looks like. And in your case, the most important pieces of information that you need to locate on your lighting floor plan are the name of the rooms, the lighting circuits, load type for those lighting circuits, and the position and wiring of the Lutron keypads. So let's have a quick look of what this looks like on an actual floor plan. Here, you notice that each room is clearly labeled. So for example, you've got entry hall, room A, office, room B, corridor, room D, kitchen, room E, living, room F, and exterior, room G. So obviously, on your floor plan, things will be slightly different but it's very important to pay attention to the naming of those rooms and how the project is built. This will help you later on to build your database exactly as per the layout of your project. And that will allow you to program your system quickly and efficiently. Now let's talk about the lighting circuits. So what is a lighting circuit or sometimes called a lighting zone? A lighting circuit is a set of light fittings that are physically connected together in order to work as one. For example, in entry hall, room A, we have two light fittings here that seems to be connected together and the name of that circuit is A1 and that is also called a circuit reference or a circuit ID. Then we have A2 that seems to be on its own. In the office, room B, we have one circuit that goes around here called B1 and then a second one above the desk called B2 and the third one here called B3. As you can see in our example, the lighting circuits are named in reference of the room they're in and in a sequence manner. So again, on your own floor plan, this may be completely different, but you have to find out how your circuits are named and that will help you throughout the commissioning of your system. The circuit references are so important to know because this is how the electrician called those circuits and this is also how the lighting circuit will be probably referenced back at the Lutron panel. So if at some point during the commissioning of your Lutron system you encounter an issue on one of the lighting circuits, you can say to the electrician, hey, I have an issue on circuit B2 and he will know straight away which circuit you're talking about. The load type will give you the information on how a lighting circuit is controlled. And by control I mean is the circuit switch, which means that the circuit will be either on or off, or is the circuit dimmable? And if it is dimmable, what dimming method is it using? So for example, is it mains dimmable or is it using a 0 to 10 volt dimming signal? And this will allow you to create and program those circuits correctly. To help you with this, you will find in general a legend for the key symbol on your floor plan. And if you can't find it there, then you should ask the lighting designer or the electrician or whoever supplied the light fittings for your project. So let's have a look at our lighting legend. So here we can see that we have a first key, number one, for what seems to be a single recessed down light. And if we look at our floor plan, it looks like we are using quite a few of those. That single recessed down light is a mains dimmable load. Then on the key number two, which is for a double recessed down light, um, the dimming method is also mains dimmable. Key number three is for a decorative pendant, mains dimmable. The key number four is for a LED strip. So that LED strip is dimmable, but this time is using a 0 to 10 volt dimming signal. 
Then we've got five, six, and seven, which are also main dimmable. And to finish, we have the key number eight, which is for an external wall light. And that load is a switch load, which means that it's going to be either on or off. The last key element that you need to check on your floor plan is the position and wiring of the Lutron key pads. In our example, we can see that we've got a key symbol that represents the Lutron keypad. So check on your floor plan to see how your Lutron keypad are represented. So here we have a keypad in the entry hall by the main entrance. Then we've got in the office another keypad by the door. In the corridor, we've got a keypad that is by the entry hall. And then we have another keypad at the bottom of the stair. You will realize that it is quite handy to add a bit of description when you create keypads in your own Lutron database. Also, in our particular example, each keypad comes with its own reference. So for example, the keypad in the office is LK1, and then the keypad in the entry hall is LK2, the one in the corridor is LK3, etc, etc. And if it is the case on your own floor plan, please, Use that reference to identify your keypad in your Lutron database. Another information that I have here is that keypads are connected to one another, certainly using a Lutron communication cable. So for example, from the main Lutron panel, we've got a cable going out that goes to the first Lutron keypad, LK1. Then it goes to LK2 in the entry hall. Then from LK2, it goes to LK3 in the corridor. From LK3, the cable is going to LK4 in a clock room. Then from LK4, it goes to LK5. And then from LK5, it goes to LK6 in the kitchen. Then from LK6, it goes all the way to LK7 in the living. And then from LK7 to LK8, also in the living, but by the external door. And then from LK8 goes to LK9. And then from LK9, that cable is going all the way back to the Lutron main panel. That connection or wiring seems to be done as a loop, which means that the cable starts and goes all the way back to the Lutron panel. Please note that the wiring of the keypads doesn't have to come back to the Lutron panel, but is a good practice to do so. And if it does, only one end will be connected to the Lutron processor. Anyway, it is important to know how your keypads are wired to one another and on which link of the Lutron processor they are connected to. So you can add this information on your Lutron database for the program to execute properly. There you have it, the key information that you need to look out on your own floor plan when you start the commissioning of a Lutron Homeware QS system are the name of the rooms, the lighting circuit and their load type and how the Lutron keypads are connected back at the Lutron processor. Now, if I can share my own experience, I would say that please use the exact names and references found on your own floor plan. Then, once the system has been fully commissioned and programmed, and you feel like some element should be renamed to help the client, for example, then feel free to do so at that point. And what I mean is, when you start your commissioning, don't try to change the name of a room or a circuit because it makes more sense to you. The floor plan is used by everyone on site, and calling the element in a different way can lead to confusion and miscommunication, especially when you're troubleshooting the system. So, make the floor plan work for you and not the other way around. Well, look, I hope this video has been useful, especially if you're about to start commissioning a Lutron system for the first time. If you have any question, feel free to leave me a comment down below and please like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep you posted when any future video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you on the next tutorial.